um, more than any other. I hate youth and talent, too. <laughs> All right, uh, we need a couple more chairs out here. One little one and one big one. Ed knows I love him, and he already would they probably have killed me by now. This is Eddie Pennington and his son Lon Alonzo right there. <laughs> Oh, here he is. Just go.
school with me doing new jazz stuff at the end. <laughs> I got more Delta to carry around than you did. I don't have as much energy as Moon, but Moon's younger than I am.
Take the lift off, all right? All right, I'll play one. Why you wait? Huh? Tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. All right. You have some great, boy, that is a great uh, guitar. Eddie, sounds like drums, huh? I know what it is, an echo, isn't it? That's what it is. Okay, Eddie Bennington and his son Alonzo. Or his older brother, one of them. Serious part. 
Oh, it's hard time to talk, don't bother me. I keep as happy as a honeybee, but if things get rough and times get hard, I'll run for that gal and I'll sell the lard. Warm in the winter, shady in the summertime. Swirl like about that bad gal of mine.
you know, I've met worlds and worlds of friends out here. If you meet a friend in Mountain View, you've got friends for life. It's just that kind of place. Your first time, people, this won't be your last time, I'll tell you that. If it is, you better look at your life, because this is one of the greatest places in the world. And you folks that's been here agree with me? It's just a long ways from everywhere. It's a word of trouble about it. Or else we'd all be here all the time. But there's so many dear friends that have been with us through the years out here. Of course, I didn't get to be here when Merle Travis was here. It would give me anything to know that he was here. I'd be here. But the first year I came, his brother, Mr. John, was here. And the next year I met Dorothy and her sisters. And there's so many good people. Al Riley. There's a lot of people that's gone on. And uh, I'm going to pick this little tune and sort of remember those friends song. This is sort of a country fried version of a pretty song.
I'm just trying to think and read when you just eat all that. I, I should have known there's something wrong when I ate all that catfish. <laughs> now there's only two more pieces. I could do it. Oh, God, there's only one more. Oh, boy, it's good out there. JoJo's, you gotta go see him. Anyway, uh, when this thing's over here, uh, I'll be back in the back, and if you'd like a new one of my new CDs, Wires to the Woods, got 20 songs on it, only two vocals, 18 instrumentals and two vocals, and uh, we now take this. You guys are gonna love this. We now take Mastercard, Visa, and American Express. Wait, 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 wait! I'm gonna show you how commercial it's getting. If you're on the internet, you can also order them from my website at www.fresh.com. Or if you don't want to mess with that, 1-800-BUY-MY-CD. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got some instructional videos back there. If you don't want to buy anything, just come back and say hi. And I guess all of us will be back there. But uh, it's nice to come out here and see. It's always a pleasure to come up here and, and continue this on in my father's honor. And it, I'm glad that you're still supporting it. And I'm glad there's so many wonderful pickers that are both uh, on the shows and going to be in the competition tomorrow. It's, uh, it's great camaraderie. It's a wonderful uh, brotherhood of uh, instruments and picking. It's great to see Moon Mullins again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave you with this song that Travis wrote. And I'll do a little kind of a brush version of it, but it's got a good, sound like Andy Griffith. It's got a good man. Extra good. Where are you going, man? <laughs> Only one more song. You want me to wait for you? See if you can hear me in there. Oh, you're just going back there. Oh, okay. <laughs> they asked me if I would be good when I came out here today. I thought, okay. That catfish makes me hungry. Well, some people come to school.
Hey, Paul, we lost an event over here in Arkansas. Can you believe we've got two Tom, Tom Toms, Tom and Tommy, as well as Mr. Moon and Eddie Kennedy and his fabulous. But we started the Georgia Fingers College Guitar Association a little less than two years ago. We uh, went up to Kentucky and heard Eddie and those pictures up there with him over to Arkansas and heard, heard Moon, and we said, we don't want to wait to uh, go to events like this to hear this great picking. We think there's a revival going on and we think they're a great part of it. So we started our own organization. We have almost 200 members now. Uh, we think we're going to have to change GFGA from the Georgia Fingers Style Guitar Association to the Galactic Fingers Style Guitar Association because we've got members in England, uh, South Africa, Indonesia, and six states. It uh, seems to be growing. We've got a website which is responsible for most of that. www.gfda.org for our organization, so you can find us there. So we're tickled to be here, and we thank Moon for an opportunity for us to tell you about what we're doing. We're having a great time, great meetings. We're still uncovering Georgia guitar pickers behind every bush and barn in Georgia. They're everywhere, and we hope to find some more. If anybody is interested in what we're doing, We'll be happy to send you some information and you can contact me. Uh, and give me your address, preferably on a blank check. <laughs> <laughs> or my wife, Maxine, down here, if you haven't met her or her. We'll be glad to talk to you about it. We'll be glad to make you some information. And most of all, we'll always be tickled for you to come visit us at our meeting. Thank you, Moon.
lay on the tuna suit. And uh, one of the, uh, the principal one day got uh, several of them together and he said, uh, I want to know, I want you to tell me exactly what you uh, would like to get out of this, uh, this program Mr. Mullins is doing for you. And several of them said, we want to be the best there is. And, so, and several of them said, we want to play just exactly like Mr. Mullins. Okay. So that's the line of the
I'll tell you what, I, I don't play that These guys play that song. Oh, well, I don't play it well. I, I always like the old popular song. Uh, like, like, uh, can I substitute for you? See, that's a Civil War song. That's even before Moon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> About any time.
and they sit there and read who you are and they can remember it by the time they leave. People people come up and tell me that it's called me Merle Haggard. And, you know, and that's because they ain't seen me pick because they know it says Merle Travis. So that's what these guitars are. These are uh, leech guitars and uh, this is one we're making. It's just like uh, Travis's. It's as close as we can get to it. I mean, there's only one original, but I'll tell you that uh, it's, it's real, real close. I can play Travis's and then play this one. The only thing different, I feel all that 40 years of wear right in here on each side. I mean, it is a little more glove-like, you know. Anybody else got a question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, list price is starting at the $29.99, and that's $3,000 a buck less. But it's $3,000, that's with a pickup system for our entry one. This with all of the Pearl and Brazilian and all that gets up to around 6000 so, you know, yes. I know you inherited your talent from your daddy Myrtle, but did, didn't you hear him a lot at, from the radio, from the very early days? Yeah, I always heard him. I mean, he was, uh, you know, I was a big fan. He was like Uncle Myrtle, because I didn't find out he was my dad until I was in my teens. But it, um, it was just something that, that I was drawn to, just like this. I've got pictures of me sitting there watching him play like this when I was about five years old at the... Uh, I went to all every place he played, come on and pick me up and take me to places and and I always around that to play his guitars and everything. So um yeah, I was very influenced by him and I mean it's 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 like Travis always used to say, he's just shaking his head, says never showed him the wick, it's just in the genes, he's just able to take a guitar, you know. So uh maybe it is that's why I always wear these jeans. I know, <laughs> I know somebody back there had a question. We can get more of these as we go on. I'd like to ask each one of you, at what age did y'all start playing guitar? Well, personally, I was, I got pictures of me, some picking a ukulele when I was four. And then I had my first guitar when I was uh, seven. And it was a uh, harmony. And uh, they got the action down real low, but I couldn't get my thumb around it. But that's when I started messing with it. I didn't. I don't think I really seriously started playing until I was about 10 or 11 now, where I could really start hearing that it was really music coming out that I was making. Tommy, what about you? Oh, well, I started when I was about 13. Um, you know, I wasn't born with like you. Know, I had to do something. I was too lazy to work and too nervous to speak, so I had to do something. <laughs>
and he bragged on the stuff. And then he came in and he sat down and played. And uh, I simply, uh, I, I woke up the next morning and I was so on fire for a guitar, I thought I, I will die. I don't get a guitar. <coughs> so uh, I, taste, I remember tasting the book. So I, I picked up a comic book there in the back. Um, there was a piece of order, uh, uh, sell two four dollar orders to see, spend four dollars a quarter with it, and you got to be honest with yourself. <laughs> and so uh, I, I ordered the, the first, the next month, that's the next day, I ordered um, the first um, four dollar order of seat. That afternoon at the school, I went out and I sold them off, told the people what I had ordered, and so I sold them off. So I, the next day I had a letter in the mail, send me the other. Uh, order two because I already got these sold. <laughs> he sent me a letter back and said, you got to take care of the first one before you get the second one. So I thought, how long can this be? So after about five days, I got the first one. The next day, I put the money in. And uh, then about a week later, I got the second one. The next day, I was getting ready to send the money. I, I had to range out farther now, on foot, of course. <laughs> and uh, so I, I got rid of all the season, like in a couple of three days. And so there I am in a dilemma. So we four dollars a quarter, and I knew my dad did not have the money. We were poor. And so um, that's what do you got there? And I said, I told him what I was doing, you know, and he said, let me have that. And then he took it from me. And I, I, I didn't know what he was going to do with it. Um, but uh, the next morning, he handed it back to me, and he had four one dollar bills and a quarter taped on to that thing inside and said, here, put this in the mailbox. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know he had a penny. Mm -hmm. And so uh, about two and a half eternities later, my guitar came <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in school. The one room school was uh, with uh, Miss Simpson was the teacher. She was mean, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I was sitting, it was three weeks after I came in, I was sitting there, and it was time for the mail person, Nellie Bunsen. I remember that, too. And uh, all of a sudden, I straightened up, I said, Miss Simpson, I'm sick, and I need to go home. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to the guitar with me. I'm going to tell you the truth, one fork of one string was the entire thing. No, <laughs> I went off to the Air Force, and one of my little brothers uh, saw, um, oh, what's his name, on um, what, the red, white, and blue guitar? Roy Clark, Buster Owens. Buster Owens, and so they painted that baby red. <laughs>
to hear some of this, and this is inspiration. It's inspirational to me. Go ahead, Luke. Tell about Moses. The time should tell about Moses, too, when you get a chance. Moses, for those, you'll tell for those that don't know who Moses is. Well, Moses, I had, I had heard of Moses, of course, from the time I was raised in the county next to Newberg, about four miles from Newberg County, across the line where you never be famous or have any talent. <laughs> <laughs> all the good ones that time went and all that was born right in, right in the boundaries. But uh, Merle, is, I was born in 56. Now I got to go to the head of big uh, Merle Paris Day, 1956, and I got to go. I was three months old. I was <laughs> <first> exposed to the <laughs> Paris. I don't remember a whole lot about it, but, uh, but that, <clears throat> Again, I reckon my parents went to it. I don't reckon they ever went to anything else, but I think everybody left in Kentucky went to a Merle Paddock. And they talked about that for years. And Merle, during that time, he wasn't doing a lot of recording all during the 60s and all the late 60s when I started learning and stuff. And uh, of course, he's hearing, I was hearing some of Chet and had a good guitar player named Don Grace that played with Sun Pit. And all that's what I wanted to play with Sun Pit. But there were certain things that Chet would play when he'd get on it that's what I liked. Well, that's the part that I could try to play. I, I liked the way it was pretty hard, you know, I couldn't figure those out. But uh, in 74, the uh, Atkins Travis Traveling Show album came out. And, uh, and of course, I, I bought an eight track tape of it, and, uh, <laughs> which was real good, trying to learn tunes off of it. But play it back then, you had like a 15 minute program, and you had to wait. <laughs> Played all the way through, and now fast forward, you know, and I'm like, I'm trying to wait 15 minutes, and I just got to get to the top. I don't know what I'm going to do. But anyhow, they talked about the high care of it, and Moe's right there on there. Well, I thought they were dead. I didn't listen well enough to what they were saying. But a guy come, I got a guitar lesson at a music store. And one day this guy was looking in the window like this that then closed the store and I was there, I let my students in. I seen this guy looking in for a while looking down and that's what opened the door and come on in. He, he, he turned out he's a guitar player and he plays a little verse of blues song style. He used to be in work down in. I said, boy, did you like to play like that? He said, Moe's Gregor? I said, oh, oh, he said, Moe's, yeah. He said, he just lives over the for us and you can go see him. I was on Thursday, well, all of a sudden, I was in Drakesburg and asking people what most right was <laughs> And uh, knocked on the door where they told me they lived at, and they called the guy from the door, and he said, Yeah, buddy, what to do for you? I said, Is this where Mr. Rager lives? He said, Yeah, this is what's left of him. He said, So do you box picker? I said, Yes, sir. He said, Well, get your box and the folks, y'all come on in. And, they and, uh, <coughs> and the man, he influenced me more that day than anybody else ever has. I mean, if I could play for you all like what he played for me that day, you know, go home and do one more time. But that's what I did ever since. Well, we're on Moses Gregory. Tommy, Tommy, you know, Tommy actually, you know, was, well, you saw him, he was just there during the days in the barber shop when Moses was playing. You want us to wait for you to get back now? <laughs> Drakesboro to see Moe's. 
نه آدم بیاد من تا نفس بیاد اگر نرسن پای تا نفس Thank mm-hmm. you. 
I wish I knew what it was. It's the, the stuff that the fat yeah. gave us for the gloves. Oh, that yellow stuff for the gloves? Yeah. And what well, is it? If anybody knows what that is, no, I've got
to her for Moses and 